It doesn't matter if you're looking for your first government job or maybe you're looking for your next government job. There's some mistakes that are commonly made that you can avoid. Let's get into it. The first one is quitting too early. And a lot of people fall under this category because they get discouraged. They apply to a GS-12 and they get rejected and they think maybe I'm not worth a GS-12. But in reality, you could easily get a GS-13. It was just the agency and that job announcement. Do not take job announcement rejections personally. It has nothing to do with you personally. It's the agency, it's the hiring manager. They're looking for somebody else that's better fitted for that position, or maybe they had someone else in mind. Maybe they had someone internally in mind. Now, do not let that discourage you either, okay? Because there's a lot of job announcements out here that have nobody in mind. They just want the best person for that position. Here's the bottom line. Many times when you're looking for a government job and you're trying to attain a government job, it's going to come down to a numbers game. How often are you applying? Yeah, you need a strong resume, sure. You need to interview well, absolutely. But how many times are you actually applying? Do not apply just one, two, or three times. Take a step back and say, well, the system's rigged. It's not for me. I'm gonna go do something else. Obviously, USA Jobs is broken. Yeah, USA Jobs is not the best. But if you keep applying with that strong resume, you will keep getting referrals. You should get about 50, 60% of your applications should be referrals. And those referrals will ultimately lead into interviews. And that's where you're gonna present your value, sell yourself, get the job. And believe it or not, there are some jobs out here, there's only two or three people applying to them. Look in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C., this area has over 5 million people. You would think that every job is inundated with applicants, but that's not the case. There are job announcements where just a handful of people apply. And then when you interview them, you're like, well, what is this? <laughs> These are the people that apply, what's going on here? So if you're watching this and you know that you're highly qualified, that you have the experience, that you have the skills, that you have the traits to be a great government employee, then do not get discouraged. Just make it a habit. Create a habit, do it once a day, at a minimum, do it once a day. And if you're saying the jobs are not out there for once a day, there's only a few jobs out there, then you need to expand your search. You need to look at different job series that you're qualified for. Next is using your private sector resume and applying on USA Jobs. Now, I wouldn't think people would do this, but people do it. There's a large percentage of resumes that come in that are automatically disqualified because they don't have the required information. And I looked at a resume just the other day. It was just bullets, really small, let's say five to six word bullets. And there were like 12 or 13 of them. It really didn't show what you did and how you did it. So you, we can't make assumptions here. We can't look at your job title and your, your 10 bullets and say, oh, this person has this, this type of skills. No. You have to spell it out. You have to spoon feed HR exactly what you did, how you did it, what was the result, all of that information, and it has to be relevant. If it's not relevant, why are we talking about it? Don't talk about your Boy Scout experience or the time that you worked at Arby's and you were whipping out those roast beef sandwiches because it doesn't have anything to do with the job. If it does have something to do with the job, then definitely mention it. Definitely have a success story that you can word in the way that conveys the value that you're gonna bring the agency. Also, get rid of those social media links, the LinkedIn or the Facebook or whatever you're putting up there. There's some people that have a portfolio and they wanna showcase their portfolio. So they put a link there. And as soon as I click the link, I see a picture of someone's face. And that's a no-go. You do not wanna have pictures of you. All right, so if you need help with a strong template, a strong style and wording of a resume that has proven to get results time and time again, if you want that to help you out to construct your resume, check out the pinned comment down below. Next thing is that you're missing required documents. When you open a job announcement, before you even click apply, you should be looking at the required document section. They're gonna require certain things. Let's say you're claiming veteran's preference. You need your DD-214 attached, and it needs to be the right copy, member copy four, that shows that you are honorably discharged. And the same thing with transcripts. If the job announcement calls for transcripts, it has to be a transcript that says conferred degree date and it has a date there. You can't just upload any old transcript. Then there are times where the required document, it says performance appraisal, but you never, you were never a government employee. So how are you going to do that? Should you send an evaluation from your old company? 
Well, a lot of times they're just looking for government appraisals. And if you don't have one, create a Microsoft Word document and type in, I have never been a government employee. I do not have a performance appraisal from the government. And then upload that Word document. That way you're not kicked off immediately. The required documents need to be in there or they're gonna look for a reason just to disqualify you right off the bat. Next is the actual experience you have in your resume. I'm looking at one resume, they have experience from the 90s, the 1990s, there's experience in there. Now, I got it, you wanna get credit from things that you've done two decades ago, but it's not gonna be seen as relevant and it's not gonna be given the same amount of weight. So most of the time I would tell people to focus on their last 10 years because in the last decade, that experience is gonna be looked at and taken into consideration a lot more than experience from over 20 years ago. Sure, you might have used a computer in the 90s, but everything has changed. The system, the, the operating system has changed, the processes, the software, the applications, all of that has changed. And by putting that you worked a job in the 1990s, you're kind of signaling like, hey, I'm an older person, I'm an older guy, I'm an older lady. So you don't want to start creating that subconscious bias. Next is there's some job announcements you shouldn't be applying to. Because if you look at who may apply, it doesn't fit you. It doesn't fit your, your hiring path. So if you're open to the public and you apply to a veteran preference position, you're gonna receive an email that says you were not found eligible in the area of consideration. And most people, when they see area of consideration, the first thing they think about is commuting distance. Like, wait a minute, I only live 30 minutes away. What do you mean area of consideration? No, they don't mean that. They mean that there were certain people they were considering and, the, and in, that, in that list of people they were considering, you weren't there. You weren't there because you didn't have the right hiring path. So look at the hiring path. This comes back to creating a strong job filter. If your job filter was strong, it should weed out all of the job announcements that you are not qualified for. And here's another thing a lot of you are doing is you're underrating yourself in the questionnaire. In the questionnaire, you don't feel comfortable marking expert because there's a feeling inside of you that says, well, maybe I'm not an expert. I'm proficient, but how proficient am I? Am I lying? Should I mark expert? Let me tell you what your competition is doing. Your competition is marking expert. And if you don't mark expert, that's fine, but I wouldn't apply to that job announcement. I would look for a job announcement that you're more comfortable of marking expert for, but maybe you're not making any of these mistakes and that's great, but you're still not getting the job offer. You're getting interviews, but you're not getting job offers. There's a way that you can make sure you turn interviews into job offers. And if you're interested in that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.